one more time. What's up, Homestead Homies? It's Oscar with Doug and Stacy, and today, this is our first year we're getting some apples from our tree, and I'm going to make uh, apple brandy, apple cordial. I, I think I did a video, like, it was a couple years ago, and everyone said, it's not a brandy, it's not a brandy. It's a fermented drink that is going to ferment for four or five months, and I guess I can call it whatever I want. So I call it apple brandy, you can call it apple cordial. But we get a lot of comments whenever we do speaking engagements, people always ask me about this. So I thought I'd do another video on it because it's so simple, so easy, and it's early enough that you guys can start preparing it and maybe give it as gifts toward the end of the year, beginning of next year. So, and it's, it's amazing and people just love it. Let's get started. It's very simple. All you're going to need is a glass container or a jar and make sure you have a wide, amount, wide enough mouth. So I like these old kind of pickle jars. If you can get those, you can order them online. Um, I know a lot of the stores have some bigger glass jars in a gallon and two and a half gallon like Walmart and Target and those places like that. And you can get those too and they work great because you're not going to need the lid because we're going to go ahead and put something else on top of it. But all you need is your apples. Just wash your apples. And then all I did was, if you have maybe even pieces of apples that you have left over, you can use that in this too. Um, I've done this before with pears. Sometimes you can mix the pears if you want because the season is pretty similar. So if you want to do pears and apples, you can. But today I'm just going to do apples and then you're going to need some organic raisins. So simple. And some sugar. You want some cane sugar, organic cane sugar. Make sure that it is cane sugar because if it just says sugar, generally it's going to be made with beets and the majority of them are genetically modified. So stay with the organic cane sugar. In your jar, you're going to put a layer of apples. So you can cut them up in pieces, you can quarter them, make them a little bit smaller. Just cut out your bad pieces and then you're going to sprinkle a layer of raisins like that. And then you're going to sprinkle a layer of your cane sugar like that and you're going to keep doing that all the way up to the top i did the apple raisins and sugar layering all the way up to the top so what you're going to do is that sugar is going to kind of you know bring more juices out and it's going to start to shrink um, and what i'm going to do is cover it with plastic wrap plastic wrap but before i did that i have a um, little masher here and then you can kind of mash it down really good make sure that it's mush down pretty tightly and then you may find that you can put another layer of apple raisins and sugar on there. I'm going to get some plastic wrap. I'm going to do two layers of plastic wrap. 
So I'm going to do the two layers. I'm going to put it on the top like this. Put it on kind of tight. All right. Tomorrow, I'm going to look at it and it's going to shrink because of the juice and the apples. And then I'm going to probably do another layer of apple raisins and sugar. And I'll mash it down really good. I may even need to do two layers, another apple raisin sugar. Because you want this up pretty high. You know, with like an inch or so. And then when that's done, you're going to mash it down, put your layers of your plastic wrap, and then I usually get a heavy book, and then I'm going to put it on top, just like that. And I'm going to stick it back in the corner somewhere and let it go for four months, five months. And then what's going to happen is this wonderful fermented liquid, um, it turns into this brandy cordial type drink, and then you can use it as a gift or just use it for yourself. So if you want to put it down in your basement, you want to put it in the back of your pantry, just put it away. You don't need to worry about anything. Now what's going to happen is it's just going to start fermenting and you're going to let it go. You can let it go four months, you can let it go five months, you can let it go six months. Generally, like if you guys are going to use it as a gift, you know, maybe you may only want to go four months. But the longer it goes, it'll just ferment a little bit more. It'll get more of the sugar out of it. But um, the good thing about this is it's going to ferment. Sometimes you might find after the fermentation process is, is getting complete, you may off, notice like molding on it. You may, it's okay, just take that stuff off. When it's done fermenting, don't touch it. You don't want to let any air get to it or anything. Just let it go. When it's done, you can just take that little layer of mold and then you can compost it. And then the other part, that's the apples, that's been fermented, you could use it in your cooking, you can use it in your baking. Um, so there's lots of really neat ways you can do. Cook it down and maybe make some like baked apples or use it in a recipe. But what you want is that liquid. So all you'll do at the end is you'll take those apples out and then you'll strain the liquid through. And then I put it in just old bottles that I have and then I just date them like this is 2016, this is 2017 and you can bottle them and then use them for special occasions or give them as gifts. All right, so this is my one from last year, 2017. Smells good. Wonderful. So, very simple, very easy to do. It just takes a little time. I hope you guys like this tip on how to use your extra apples. We will look forward to seeing you guys on our next video. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we will see you later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a Homestead Homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.